All right. Our little diagram here that we were looking at before. Let me see if I can, well, not as far as it goes. All right, let me get on this side. All right. So we know now that this last section here is for subnetting, subnetting purposes only. We break it up into its four bit values for each position. All right. We've been given a network prefix, prefix I'm sorry, network prefix of 52. Therefore, that blue line you see right here, that is our starting point. And we count for subnets like we normally do. We count for subnets like we normally do, starting at here. So we count for subnets to what do we need? What are we looking for? I think we have a need for 10 subnets. So we go 2, 4, 8 to little, 16. So that's where my line then stops. So what is the increment value? And that is the most important part in IPv6. We need to understand what is our increment value. Our increment value is 1. We stopped at what position though? That is key because we need to know what position we're incrementing by. In this case, we're in the second position, meaning that second zero right there, right? Right here, we're at the second position. So we're incrementing right there by what number? One. Remember, in IP4, the bit values on top was 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. But this is hex now. The bit values are just 1, 2, 4, 8. So therefore, if I stop counting for something that's right there, because all I needed were 10, I had to go to 16, my increment is 1. So I am incrementing by 1 in the second position. That's how you find it. You first put the line where the sub with the network prefix that was given, and it was given here. Remember how we got that. 16, and 16 is 32, and 16 is 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, line. That is our starting point. That line is our starting point. Now we need 10 subnets. So we count like we normally do for IPv4 from left to right. 2, 4, 8, 16. 16, therefore, our increment is 1. 1, because that bit value right there is 1. What position? Position 2. Position 2. All right? And then we can go ahead and start incrementing by 1. This right here. Finding the, this increment value is the most important part of the subnetting. That's the hardest part that people have when they're subnetting IPv6 is finding the increment value. Are there calculators out there? Yes. Do you want to check your work? Most definitely. I do it. I want to make sure that I'm doing it right. You go to, uh, what's that website? Subnettingonline.com. Subnettingonline.com. They have IPv6 calculators. They have IPv4 calculators. They got all sorts of tools. So you want to verify your work, all right? Me as a, uh, an instructor, definitely I want to make sure I'm doing things correctly so I verify my work. You as an IT individual out in the field as well, okay, you want to verify your work. You always want to verify that what you're doing is correct. So using calculators is nothing wrong. You just can't use it when you go take your certification. And don't worry, do not worry, do not worry. For this course, for the CCNA 200-120 test, or if you're taking ICND-1 or ICND-2, or you're taking the CSEN, whatever it is that you're taking, all right, you're not going to be subnetting in IPv6. Nowhere near in the future is that going to happen, okay? So, but I want you to start embracing it because you can see it's not that difficult. All you got to do is take that subnet section, break it up into its binary bit form, right? Because each one of these is four bits long. Put in the increment values on top. You have a starting point that you've been given. Count your subnets like you normally would. 248, whatever it is. Then the bit value that it lands on, that is your increment. And once you find the increment, and once you find the position that you're incrementing in, then you can begin to lay out the network. And that's what we're going to do next. I'll see you in the next lecture.